Hey folks, it's Marvin Cash, the host of The Articulate Fly, and we're back with another Matt the Hatch with Matt Green. How you doing, Matt? Hey Marvin, how's it hanging? Uh, I'm just trying to stay out of trouble as always, so you're in the field today, huh? Yeah, we're up here at Highlands Biological Station, just outside of Cashiers in Highlands, North Carolina, teaching folks about EPTs, or Thermoptera, Plecoptera, and Trichoptera, those are the mayflies, stoneflies, and caterflies. They're just up here hanging out, doing some teaching, uh, doing some field work too with the students. It's fun stuff. Well, good deal. So, what are you? What kind of bugs are you finding? Oh well, in, in terms of adults, what we're finding right now are some rolling stone flies. We talked about them a little bit uh, earlier in some of our segments. These are the Lutridae or the Lutra. That's the genus. They're about a size. 18, 16, or 20, depending on the species. Very thin-bodied stone flies, only a couple millimeters wide, and about a half inch to three-quarter inch long. And we're seeing some larger yellow stone flies. These things are probably about two and a half to three inches. Some of them, they're huge. These are um, Ecoptera xanthes. Um, uh, the, the larvae are actually extremely yellow with some, some darker black markings on the head. Uh, a mix of different tan, gray, uh, caddis flies, many different families. Almost too much to name. There's still some gray fox mayflies out. Um, some of the heptogeneity mayflies. These are stenonema. They're still out, still around. Um, and we are starting to see hexagenia pop up yeah, all over the East Coast and including the Midwest. Um, we talked about them a little bit earlier, but they're really starting to pop here as of late, last couple of weeks. And uh, primarily, these are the, the true hexagenia, the species hexagenia limbata, uh, the, the females and sebamago which is the, the stage right before the true adult stage or the imago. Um, they're a uh, kind of a anywhere between a a, uh, a yellow cream with a brown or even burgundy dorsal patterning. Uh, typically, a size uh, two or four. They're just they're huge. You know, some of them are even bigger than green drakes. Uh, wings are gray to cream, depending on the region. And there, there are probably a number of different species in this group. This species is just so widespread. The likelihood of there being multiple species here is, is high. Good chances. But that's why I mentioned there's some variation in wing patterning with the females and the males. The males are typically a good bit darker. Uh, they can be yellow, but they're normally darker orange or w- with a brown uh, dorsal patterning, so the top of the insect on the abdomen. And then the, the imagos or the spinners have clear wings in both the males and the females. Uh, the males are, are uh, more reddish brown, and the, then the females are actually like a bright yellow cream for the most part uh, for the true hexagenia lumbata. And there's probably a subspecies in there in this group that has brown or red females, but you know, can't really speak to that currently. Maybe in another 10 or 15 years after I do more research on them, Marvin. Uh, the nymphs are burrowing mayflies. These are mayflies in the family ephemerity that form uh, kind of half circle, half moon shaped tunnels and fine sediment up against uh, river banks and ponds and lakes. And in the southeast, we really see a lot of them in lakes, and they'll attract about every fish um, to the surface. Um, and they, these can be <laughs> bass, they can be carp, they can be panfish. Panfish is a feeding frenzy. And typically, you'll see the, the greatest emergence of these insects going from nymph to the dun stage, um, you know, the submamago stage, in the late evening or during the night. And so most of the activity is at night. And this species is different than the late summer hex, which is Hexagenia altrocaldata, and then the Midwestern summer hex that have more blue or purple bodies 
those are hexagenia bilineata. And so you might find those out in the Midwest. But the, the hexagenia lymbata group is found all the way into Minnesota, Wisconsin, as far north as Michigan in the upper peninsula, all the way as far south as uh, Florida, Georgia, Alabama, and everywhere in between, including up into Maine. I mean, this this thing is, is found everywhere east of the Rockies. So it's, it's, super, it's super, they're super abundant, super important. Heck, they're even in swamps in coastal North Carolina. In fact, some of the largest populations in the state of North Carolina are in the large coastal freshwater rivers in northeastern part of the state and then down towards Wilmington, portions of the Cape Fear, the Black River, and then the northeastern part of the state, the Chowan, the... Um, um, Oh, what's the name of that one? The Tar, northern portion of the Tar and the Roanoke. And, and they're in similar rivers in Virginia and South Carolina and Georgia and, and within the southeast. And so um, they're about everywhere where they haven't been extirpated. And they're, they're, it's about as fun fishing as you can get in the summer, Marvin. Yeah, it's, and you know, and obviously when we think about hex hatches, we think about going out at night with headlamps and fishing. But, you know, is it productive to, to nymph them up too? Um, you can, you, you know, if you're fishing in the late evening when the, the fish are more active on the nymphs, but uh, definitely fishing on the surface is where the most fun is. And you know, I want to just point out, you know, we normally think of all oh, these great hex uh, emergencies in Michigan and big brown trout and fantastic. I want to do it one day. I still haven't. It's on my bucket list. But we associate hex and mayflies with trout. But this is one of the few mayflies that emerges in mass in our reservoirs in the southeast, the Mid Atlantic, and then in natural lakes across the, the northeast and then into Maine. Uh, that that brings a multitude of fish species to the surface to feed on these things. So you don't have to be a trout fisherman or a person to be a hex fisher person. You can be all species in, in fish hexania. Gotcha. And uh, any suggestions on kind of how to approach the dry fly fishing for these guys? Honestly, Marvin, cast right to the fish. You know, if it, I use these big CDC flies that uh, most people have never seen, and <laughs> part of me wants to keep it that way just because they're so effective. But we're talking big patterns here twos, fours, sixes, big stuff. And because of that, you can really work them on the surface to elicit strikes. And I found that helpful. It really just casting where the rise is is all you have to do is a lot of times with these, these big hex flies. The fish are so up on them, it doesn't take much, especially if there's a bunch of bugs on the surface. Uh, if you're fishing at night, I recommend using a red light that you can attach to a hat so you can at least see what you're doing half the time. Uh, listen for eats on the surface, and then uh, cast in that vicinity in that direction. And if you cast in that vicinity and you don't get a strike, ask yourself, did I cast far enough or did I overcast? Chances are most of the time you haven't cast far enough. So just stretch out a little bit more line and give it another couple of casts, and you'll probably get that fish that grows. They're, they're moving for them, Marvin. They're, they move for them. Trout, bass, carp, they're moving for these flies. Half the time, you can just let it sit out there on the surface and they'll cruise and come over and smack it. So just be patient. Yeah, and I would imagine, too, you can get away with a little bit of uh, animation with your fly, too. Oh, yeah. The big CDC flies on the surface using four or five whole feathers for the wing. You're going to be animated. You know, there's no getting around that. <laughs> Get used to that. Yeah, a little twitch. You can, you, you can fish. Yeah, a little twitch in the rod tip on a good, on a, a good soft rod, or just you know, a rod with a fine tip. Uh, I'm still using four X and five X, but you could probably get away with three X or two X <laughs> at night on some of these fishes, especially if they're big. You know, they're not going to care. They're just swiping at these big, these big bugs. So. Yeah, and how long does the hatch generally last? I'm sure it varies by region. In the southeast, it really heats up, um, you know, 
third week of June, fourth week of June, lasting into maybe early August. It's about that way for trout and part of the Northeast and the upper Midwest where these bugs are common. But, but you'll have opportunities between June and probably August and late August, most places. Um, and keep in mind, these are not hexagenia ultra caudata. You know, those, those are the late summer hex showing up in many of the spring creeks exclusively through the Mid Atlantic and then the upper portions of the Northeast uh, from the end of August through middle of September in many places. We can talk about those a little bit later. Absolutely. And you know, folks, we love questions. If you have a question for Matt, you can email it to us or send it to us on our Facebook or Instagram page, and we'll try to work it into the next Matt the Hatch. And, you know, uh, Matt, uh, why don't you let folks kind of know what you're up to, um, you know, in the near future on the fishing front? Oh, yeah. I mean, I've been out to the Smith, fished the Sulphurs over there. They were they were better than I expected. My shout out goes to EJ of Raleigh Fly Fishing, he's a good guy. Book him. He can fish sulfurs. He'll show you a good time on the surface if you can cast to him. That's the important thing. Can you cast to him? Work on the casting to get there. Uh, doing a little fishing probably in Pennsylvania later in August for white flies, maybe some late summer hacks. Might try to get out and do some fishing in the Blue Ridge Mountains or Great Smokies. It's heating up, though, Marvin, so... I'm just switching over to some other stuff, research-related to ask why. Yeah, there you go. While, while I wait for that that bug fishing that's to come, maybe get up and hit up some trichos, that same Pennsylvania trip here later in August. Well, there you go. And, folks, if you're anywhere near the hex hatch, you owe it to yourself to get out there and catch a few. Tight lines, everybody. Tight lines, Matt. Yeah, tight lines, Marvin. Take care. <laughs>